Great. So I have some questions about uh, food and cooking and cost of living here in Toronto. So I'll try and answer them. I'm at home on a Friday night and it's 9 o'clock and I'm cooking, which makes me either really unpopular or I'm just really tired. Actually, I'm kind of sick. That'll be my excuse for why I'm home cooking on a Saturday or a Friday night by myself. Um, I'm making a dish tonight that has, um, as you see here, some onions and some potatoes. Um, and I'll be baking that with um, some fennel or anise and some mushrooms and some goat cheese. So I'm just preparing the onions right now. Those are sauteing. I'm going to prepare the fennel next. And when everything's sort of cooked down and the potatoes are tender, I put everything together in a in a plate, a pie plate, a pie plate. Um, and then at that point, everything can go in the oven, and we'll be good to go. So if you don't know what anise is, this is anise. Um, it's not the female relative of uh, your parents' uh, sibling, or it's not the female child of your parents' sibling. I'm sorry, that was an awful joke and nobody wants to hear me making awful jokes. Anyways, so I'm going to talk a bit about um, cost of living in Toronto because I've gotten a few questions about that. So in terms of everything that I'm preparing tonight, of course the potatoes are the cheapest, and in Canada you can get however poor you might find yourself at any given time. The likelihood is that um, Potatoes are one of the cheapest foods you'll be able to get. And they're a great source of um, good unprocessed carbohydrates. They also have a lot of vitamin C. Sometimes I feel like I'm turning this YouTube channel into a healthy eating channel, which if it helps you, then that's great. And if you don't like it, then you don't have to come over for dinner. But, um, yeah, so the potatoes are, I like guess, staple food. They can function like rice. Um, for a lot of people. You want to make sure that you're preparing them um, before they get soft. You want to buy firm potatoes. You don't want them to get too squishy before you eat them. So I'm just going to be slicing up the mushrooms and preparing the fennel. And then I'm going to saute those. Which is, so I'll throw them into the pan, um, into the wok actually, with um, the onions. And then when I'm done doing that, everything will go in the oven. So grocery shopping, I mean, the thing about Canada is that most people go to a grocery store to get pretty much all of their food. Um, some people do go to things like farmer's markets. Um, there are some butchers, for instance, near my house that are quite good. Um, I might try and take the camera over to the Sassi Chevrolet Tavaro sometime which is the uh, Portuguese butcher that's around the corner from my house. Um, it's actually a great butcher because um, they have staff on site that process all the meat. If you go to a grocery store in Canada, and I might show you this sometime, if you go, all of the meat is on a, a styrofoam tray, about that big, and it's covered in plastic. And you don't know how long it's been sitting there, you don't know who's come along and picked it up and then taken it and then put it back and whatever. But in a lot of the local butchers, <coughs> pardon me, in a lot of the local butchers, um, and especially the one that I'm talking about around the corner from me, uh, you can actually see into the area where they process the meat. So that's nice. It's a nice bonus to know where your food is coming from and who's handling it and how. And so every day, if you walk by at the right time, you'll see them closing up shop. And you see them cleaning out um, the killing floor. Not the killing floor. They don't have a killing floor. I just like to say that because it's sensational. But you, c you see them cleaning out that part of the store where they, um, where they process all the meat, for instance, and, and so on. So I'm just cutting up the anise now. Um, the anise, uh, the part that you eat is actually this big part at the bottom. Um, and this is actually part of the celery family. I think it's the same family. The stalks are very, very reminiscent, but it has a very distinct smell. And the anise um, that I bought, 
I don't know how big they usually come, and I don't know if they're in season. And this is one of the interesting things about Canadian supermarkets, is that you can buy everything out of season, because in the winter, nothing is in season. Um, and so the best you can hope for in terms of fresh produce is locally grown stuff that comes from the greenhouse, which is too bad, but also a reality of living in this particular climate. For now, I'm just preparing some vegetables. Um, if you're looking to buy things fresh, you can always go to a farmer's market. Um, and then things can get a little bit more expensive, but you're buying directly from the farmer at that point, so you know exactly where all of your money is going. Um, in terms of prices, the potato I bought at maybe 69 cents a pound, but potatoes can go as much as $1.29 a pound. And when I take you to the grocery store, I'll take you to one of the more affordable grocery stores, one of the, the less expensive ones, and you can have a, a sense for how much things cost there. Uh, and there is a fairly significant difference at times um, between the prices at uh, a lower end discount grocery store where the selection is smaller and a higher end one where you can get organic grown uh, vegetables and things like this. So it really depends on how much you're willing to spend and how committed you are to eating in a certain way and how picky you are. As a student, I'm not that picky because I can't afford to be, but there are certain things <coughs> like spinach, for instance, that you want to be buying organic, things that have um, leaves that attract bugs, of course. Those tend to be sprayed with pesticides more often, and you want to buy those organic. Anyway, so I'm just going to put some more of these vegetables on, and I'll check in with you in a bit. I like to buy goat cheese because it's not made from cow's milk, obviously. <coughs> and for someone who is lactose intolerant, which means that I can't, um, I don't, my body doesn't process lactose from cow's milk very easily, goat cheese is a very nice alternative and it doesn't uh, mess with my system quite as much as regular cow's milk will in cow's milk cheese. Um, goat cheese is not the most expensive kind of cheese. This package of cheese here, which is about 140 grams, um, costs about $3.99. You can get it on sale, or you can get a cheaper brand, um, which often is helpful. But the problem with Canadian cheese is that it's extremely expensive, and the quality that you can get in um, the grocery store in, uh, in a regular supermarket is not the greatest quality. So this is definitely one of those things that I'm very much looking forward to in terms of spending time in France is to be able to have good inexpensive cheese um, on a regular basis. Now, I am lactose intolerant, so maybe that's not the greatest idea or it's not the greatest idea for the people who are hanging out with me who are there. But um, people who are um, from Europe oftentimes remark on how expensive the cheese is here in Canada. Even though we do have a fairly substantial dairy industry, so we do produce a lot of milk in this country. I think the concern for a lot of people, um, for a lot of cheese manufacturers, is in fact um, the reality that Certain cheeses can only be produced in certain regions. So certain French cheeses, for instance, can only be produced in certain parts of France. Certain Italian cheeses, you know, you can't produce them everywhere. And so the problem becomes, instead of producing those things here in Canada, we have to import a lot of them from the European Union, for instance. And oftentimes there are certain kinds of rules about uh, regulating dairy products and so on and so forth that actually prevent a lot of European products from coming into Canada. So for instance, there are uh, laws that uh, prohibit raw milk from being sold in stores and so certain cheese um, that's made from raw unprocessed milk that hasn't been you know, pasteurized yet, these often 
times cannot be sold in Canadian stores because of health regulations and so on. So uh, there, there are a lot of reasons why it's very difficult to get cheese in, in this country. And I do know that um, a lot of my friends who have spent time in Europe <coughs> like to complain about this particular problem when they get back. And I'm sure I'll be one of those people too. So everything's going into the oven. Now I'm going to clean up around here for a little bit and maybe I'll try and put the video together for you.